So the math test. <laughs> You're watching this video because you want to know what is on the math test for the GED high set or task test. In fact, you asked for it. So thanks to those of you that made this video happen. In this video here today, I'm going to tell you exactly what you can expect to find on the math test and what is the most important thing, what you really need to know in order to pass this test. So welcome here to Purely Persistent. I'm Michelle and I have a passion for empowering others to obtain high school equivalency, develop a satisfying career, and ultimately achieve the happiness that everyone deserves. Welcome if you're new here and click that subscribe button for many more awesome videos. So the tests here range from the high set, which is 90 minutes, to the GED, which is 115 minutes. But the GED does offer a short three minute break in the middle of the test between the two different sections. No break on the high set. Do you get a calculator? Yes and no. With the high set, you get a calculator for the entire test. With the GED, no calculator at the beginning, but then after your break, you get a calculator. <laughs> for the high set test, 45% is going to be algebra, algebra. 18% here is going to be data, probability, and statistics. 18% measurement and geometry. And 19% is numbers and operations. Now the GED is pretty similar, except our algebra goes to 55%, and the rest of this stuff, which represents 45%, they just call quantitative problem solving, but it really includes the rest of this. Now, as you're taking the math test, or rather prepping for the math test, it's really important that you're familiar with math concepts, general math concepts, measurements, be able to measure distances, kind of have a general gist of how distances work, equations, and Best of all, apply math to solve real life problems. Isn't that why we like math? So that we can solve real life problems? Those are the best ones, I think. <laughs> A lot of people have math anxiety and they get pretty nervous and kind of freaked out when they're working with math. But one thing that's really important, believe in you. You've got to believe in yourself. Yes, the math test is hard. Yes, there will be some tricky problems that you'll definitely get wrong. And yes, you're probably going to have to study. In fact, I would say 90% of my students have to study math. But my students can do hard things. And I know that you can do hard things too. And don't let this math test stop you. You can do this. Just work hard and be purely persistent. First up here, we have algebra representing 45 to 55 percent of the test. So if you're going to focus on anything, definitely focus on this. Okay, so first thing, interpret parts of an expression. Be able to read an expression and know what it actually means. Arithmetic of polynomials. My third grade teacher taught me how to spell arithmetic. A red Indian thought he might eat taffy in church. My third grade teacher was not politically correct, clearly. But so if you add 2a plus 3a, you get 5a, right? Very simplistic example, but that's the arithmetic of polynomials. Okay, solve the quadratic equation. On the high set test, you have to memorize the quadratic equation. On the GED and the task, they provide it for you in the formula sheet. But let's learn how to spell it. I mean, write it. Okay. 
Now, this could look extremely daunting, but if you'd like me to make a video on this, definitely leave a comment down below or a video on any of these specific math terms. And I would happily do that, especially this one because it has a fun song. Okay, create e equations, rearrange formulas and equations because a squared plus b squared equals b squared plus a squared, right? It's the beauty of arithmetic. I mean, algebra. <laughs> okay, and the rate of changes with graphs. Be able to read graphs and understand graphs in relation to algebra. Okay, next up here, numbers and operations. Real numbers. Aren't they all real? <laughs> Do we have fake numbers? Uh, actually, uh, real numbers is a real math thing. Scientific notation. So let's say I have a number that's way too big or way too small. Maybe I'm talking about space or I'm talking about little tiny atoms, right? That's from the science video. So that's scientific notation. So I can take a number 4.3 times 10 to the fourth. And I just have to move the decimal point over four times. So, so another way to say 43,000 is to say 4.10, 4.3 times 10 to the fourth. Now, usually the number is going to be way bigger, like 17 or 18 or 25 or something like that. Then we have multi-step real world problems. Money, right? We all love talking about money and working with money. There can be math problems on that. Also, rate, percentage, etc. Coming in at about 18 to 20 percent is measurement and geometry. First, we have the Pythagorean theorem. And Pythagoras, who was a mathematician from Greece, came up with this. And so basically, we have a triangle, and we have one side, which is straight, the other side, which is straight, and then we have that angled one. And so to figure out how long that angled one is, we take a squared plus b squared, and that equals c squared. And that is Pythagorean theorem. Next, compare triangles. Did you know there's more than one type of triangle? Make sure you do it before you take the test. <laughs> okay, volume and surface area. Okay, I've got this box. Volume is how much can be inside the box. Now, this is a little bit simple because it's just a box. You're also going to need to figure this out for cylinders and that sort of thing, but they'll provide the equations for you, so don't worry. And surface area is our box, and you really have to think in 3D when it comes to surface area. So I have to figure out, okay, what is the area of this side of the box, and this side of the box, and this side of the box, and this side of the box, and, the box, and the top, and the bottom. That's how you figure out uh, the surface area or sometimes it's called the net. So they might like show a picture of a box like that's taken apart or something like that or a pyramid that's taken apart, but that's going to be your surface area. Next we have density. Okay, so think about where you live. Are there a lot of people in your town or are there just a couple of people? And is Think about your state. So they sometimes say there are, you know, 300 million people per square mile. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. In New York City. Or else they might say, hey, in Wyoming, there are 30 cows per square mile. <laughs> Something like that, okay? Um, I also like to think about density when it comes to like chocolate chip cookies. Like how many chocolate chips are in this one cookie? That would be density. It's also used a bit in science. Okay, angles. We have three different types of angles here. We have the right angle, which is at 90 degrees. Then we have this one here, which is the obtuse angle, and it's anywhere from 90 to 180. And I like to say obtuse triangle. <laughs> and then we have this one that's anywhere from 0 to 90 degrees, and it's just a little one. It's a cute little triangle. Okay, so obtuse and a cute little triangle. That's a silly mnemonic device to remember it. And then you're also going to need to know other geometric terms. 
at another 18 to 20% is data analysis, probability, and statistics. So first off, we have graphs and tables. So think about your pie chart, your bar graph, that sort of thing. Make sure that you can read these. Also make sure you can read them for the science and social studies test because things like that might be on those tests as well. A scatter plot. Now notice here I have a little plot line with lots and lots of dots. That's a scatter plot and you just kind of have to figure out a line in the middle where there are some on the bottom, some on the top, and it's about even. Probability of a chance event. Okay, I flip a coin, what are the chances it's going to let land on a heads? 50-50, right? There's a one to one chance uh, that it will land on heads. What if I flip the coin five times? What are the chances that the coin will land on heads all five times? There's actually a pretty easy calculation to do that, and that's the probability of a chance event. And then we have mean, median, and mode. Mean is the average. Median, if all your numbers were lined up, the median is like the middle one. And mode is whatever number appears the most number of times. Good news, there's a formula sheet, yay! Uh, so you're not going to have to memorize every single formula. Like remember that Pythagorean theorem on the formula sheet. But really make sure that you take some time to go through your formula sheet to see what's there and what's not there. For instance, on the high set and task test, the quadratic equation is not provided on the formula sheet. So you gotta memorize it. The one thing that is the most important is that you need to remember you are enough. This math test is challenging, but you can do it. You might need to study up a bit and your skills might not be where they need to be in order to take it. Study up, believe in yourself. You are enough and I believe in you. Bye-bye.